Well, now we turn to our next segment of the show. A federal judge will talk about a new, a different new Florida law. A federal judge recently blocked part of a new Florida law that makes it more, that made it more difficult for community-based organizations to register people to vote. The law is called SB 7050, and I'd like to hear what you think about it as well. You can email me at dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885, and we might even get to some phone calls later in the show, 813-239-9663. And joining us right now to talk about this new law is Adriel Cepeda de Rue, Deputy Director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project. He argued the preliminary injunction motion against Florida's new voter registration law on behalf of the plaintiffs. So welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Adriel. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for having me this morning. A pleasure to be here with you. I'm really glad that you could join us to talk about this new law and why you're fighting it. So let's begin with, why did you ask the court to block this law? Sure. Uh, Great question. Well, uh, Florida ranks uh, 47th in the nation for registered eligible voters out of all the states. Um, uh, 37% of eligible Floridians are not registered to vote. Um, And uh, this new bill would have required all organizations who do this type of work registering voters to file an affirmation saying that they do not employ or work with any non-citizens as they register uh, voters. Um, violations, and by, by violations, I mean any uh, non-citizen that would that was working with these uh, organizations would subject those groups to a $50,000 fine, and there's no cap on, on that amount, so it could go on indefinitely. And, and this was potentially fatal to many groups, including our clients, because $50,000 uh, standing alone is a huge sum of money, and that's, again, just for one violation if, you know, uh, you, you, you by any chance it's three people who did voter registration work for you, and, and by it, by some chance you were not aware that they were not uh, citizens. That's a, you're talking $150,000 in fines already. Um, the the law uh, bans all non-citizens. It's uh, irrespective of lawful or unlawful status from registering voters. So it bans uh, uh, people who've been in their communities for decades. It bans veterans. Uh, uh, from doing this type of, of work. Um, and this is very important and constitutionally protected work. Uh, registering voters is not just any kind of conduct or any kind of speech. It's the kind of work that the, the Supreme Court has said is, is protected by uh, the First Amendment. So we believe that the law uh, is a, a violation of um, the individuals and the group's First Amendment rights, and also their equal protection rights, because again, on its face, the law classifies between non-citizens and uh, citizens, which is uh, a, a, a constitutional violation, as the court eventually decided. And this prohibition also includes lawful permanent residents of the U.S. who just they're not they don't have they happen to not be citizens, but they're lawful permanent residents, but they're still also forbidden under this law. Correct. That, that was my point. That's what I was trying to get to earlier. Uh, it treats all non-citizens the same. Um, uh, it, it's irrespective of, of status. Um, three of our individual plaintiffs, for example, uh, have been in their communities for many, many years. Um, the uh, Chief Judge Walker's uh, decision, in fact, lifted up one of our plaintiffs who has been here for decades. She herself is a trained lawyer from her native El Salvador. She moved here to uh, uh, monitor elections back in, in uh, almost 20 years ago at this point. So uh, it, it, it treats, um, it, it bans lawful permanent, including veterans, including people who ha- work for Florida state agencies and have access to sensitive information already. It treats them the same and, and blocks them from uh, doing this vital work for their communities. And your group, the ACLU, joined other voting rights and immigrants' rights advocates to file this lawsuit. And as you said, it would specifically target provisions in the law that has to do with have to do with non-citizens and impose that fifty thousand dollar fine on those organizations for each non-citizen who handles or collects voter registration forms for it. And this is what the president of the Hispanic Federation said, Florida's latest voter registration law was unconstitutional and served no other purpose than to silence our communities. Uh, How would you respond to what your colleague there said? I would agree completely. 
uh, you know, some, some statistics bear this out and were uh, in, in full view of the court. Um, the Hispanic Federation, 70% of its canvassers who do voter registration work are non-citizens. Um, for our other organizational client, Poder Latinx, that's 90%. So this is essentially their entire workforce that would have been shut out from doing this vital voter registration work as early as July 1st when the law was scheduled to take effect. Um, the state's answer to those concerns was that, as you said, that the law just simply banned non-citizens from handling completed ballots. Well, that's still a huge problem because these groups would have had to find entirely new uh, uh, employees. They would have had to hope that uh, only U.S. citizens would walk through their door hoping to volunteer. Uh, and if they really wanted to play it safe, if they really wanted to avoid any chance at uh, getting stuck with this $50,000 fine, then the best option would have been to fire everyone and, and start anew. And so it really put these groups between a uh, rock and a very hard place. And we're, we're very thankful uh, that, the, that the court recognized that. We're speaking with Adriel Cepeda de Rue, De Deputy Director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project. And we're talking about a new Florida law that makes it more difficult for community-based organizations to register people to vote. And part of SB 750 was recently blocked by a federal judge. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're coming to you from the studios of WMNF Tampa. If you have any thoughts about this, you can email dj at wmnf.org, text 813 433 0885. We're coming to you live on August the 1st. And uh, Ariel, I, uh, Adriel, I should say, the um, Florida's governor and the mm -hmm. Republicans in the legislature have defended this law. They say that it was needed to make sure that elections are secure. So isn't the security of elections important? Uh, nobody disputes that the security of elections is important. And again, this was in full view before the court. Um, uh, the the issue is that the state has to choose constitutional means to address uh, that issue, to address the safety and security of elections. And what the court found here is that the, the state had failed to connect uh, the law that it passed to the problem that it said it had. So uh, uh, sure, uh, the security of elections is, is vital and is, is, is very important, but the state pressed at the hearing had no uh, what the court called connective tissue. It didn't really say why the problem were non-citizens. What, what, uh, uh, it could not point to anything in the record that says uh, non-citizens registering voters are, uh, uh, lead to a problem or, or highlight any security. And uh, I should say, um, we are working, um, because this law uh, bans protected speech, because this law classifies on its face, uh, it, it forces the state uh, under just the case law. The state has to come up with, with a connection between the law that it, that it has passed and, and the means. It's not just, you know, um, uh, sometimes you can say, you can see like a, a speed limit, for example, and, and the state will get a pass on whether the, the safe speed is 55 or 60, but when you pass a law that essentially silences uh, uh, silences individuals from engaging in protected speech or classifies on uh, a, on the basis of a, of a protected class as alienage is, for example, then the state has to really show what's called tailoring. It has to show that the law that it's passing is, is carefully designed to address the problem that it's saying it has, and the, the state didn't do that here. On that point of constitutionality that you mentioned a minute ago, the judge had something to say about it. He said in, in his ruling that the challenge provisions exemplify something Florida has struggled with in recent years, namely governing within the bounds set by the United States Constitution. The judge goes on to say the free state of Florida is simply not free to exceed the bounds of the United States Constitution. Uh, that uh, seems like some strong language there from a judge. It's, it's strong, but it's, but it's correct. Uh, again, the, the state has many means at its disposal to uh, protect its elections. It just has to, to do it, it, it under constitutional means, and, and here it, it didn't do that. Um, the, the court, for example, lifted the work of our, of our clients and specifically the lengths to which they go to ensure that uh, their communities are, are well represented. Um, the fact that 
uh, that our, our clients engage eligible voters. It's there, again, there's no uh, there's no indication of that there's a problem here uh, that this law was specifically meant to address because our clients, the people who work for them, are only registering um, eligible voters. The judge also said that this case arises from Florida's latest assault on the right to vote. So in when he was saying latest assault, the judge is essentially kind of saying that the state has a history of making it more difficult for people to, to vote here. Yes, uh, this is the, just the latest in a series of, of bills and a series of laws that the state of Florida has passed over the last, uh, uh, I, I would say at this point, 12 uh, years or so um, that has landed it in the courts. Uh, parts of those laws have been blocked. Parts have, uh, you know, made their run through the courts and have eventually taken effect. But some have also been whittled or or made uh, uh, less problematic. Uh, the the judge is is absolutely correct. It's it's just the latest in a long string. Um, many of these bills have taken specific aim at uh, what we call third-party voter registration organizations like our client Hispanic Federation and uh, Poder Latinx. And uh, uh, yes, this is, uh, I would say, uh, just off the top of my head, just the third in about maybe the last decade of these bills that um, takes aim at, at, those, at those organizations and the work they do. So this judge has put a hold on certain parts of that law. What are the next step? Are there is are there other parts of the this law that are being challenged, or what's what, when will the, these parts of the law uh, get another day in court? Let's say what would be coming up next. That that's right. That's absolutely right. I should say um, other groups, several other groups, brought challenges to the law. Uh, we and our clients focus specifically on this non-citizen. Uh, ban because we do did feel that it was particularly draconian and onerous and as of again as of July 1st it would have simply put uh, organizations out of business and for our individual plaintiffs you know it would have uh, threatened their livelihoods this is their work this is what they do um, but there are other parts of the of the law uh, the, the judge the court for example blocked another part that um, makes it a felony to retain uh, voter information. For um, for anything other than registering voters, and you know that would have prevented organizations, for example, from carrying out get out the vote efforts, uh, which are also protected speech and protected conduct. Um, as of right now, uh, the the court blocked this, this the non citizen provision and that uh, information uh, portion of the law from taking effect as of July first. Uh, the state has indicated that it will appeal. So uh, it, it goes on to to it goes on to an appeal at the um, 11th Circuit at the Circuit Court of Appeals. I want to remind people that our guest is Adriel Cepeda de Rio, a deputy director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project. And we're talking about the new Florida law that makes it more difficult for community based organizations to register people to vote. And part of that law, SB 7050, was recently blocked by a federal judge you're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're coming to you live on August 1st from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And the the judge, one of the other things that the judge wrote in his uh, his ruling is that, and it came out the day before the 4th of July, the judge said that if it were not for this new law on the 4th of July, individuals and groups that include non-citizens might be out there registering new voters. And, and this is a quote from the judge, in doing so, they would embody those democratic ideals that for nearly 247 years have made our system the envy of the world. So um, I don't know, kind of flourishing language there to, to, to say how important it is to register to vote and that everyone be able to participate in that kind of, of action. Absolutely, Sean. Uh, maybe flourishing, but, but also accurate. Uh, that is why we, we rushed to, to court with um, what's called a preliminary injunction motion. Uh, in the normal course, you would have a case uh, take its time in the court. Uh, but here, we knew that as of July 1st, as of the day that this uh, bill would take effect, that our clients would essentially have to completely reorganize their efforts, would have to restructure, we would have to find new volunteers, find new staff members. Um, you know, it, for example, they would have had to make sure 
that uh, um, only citizen volunteers were, were touching uh, completed ballots, they, they would, which may have had to require just completely reorganizing their, their offices. Um, and uh, like I said, at, at the worst case scenario, they could have reasonably chosen to just fire everyone because it, it would have been the easiest way to ensure maybe that, that they don't get hit with these fines. So um, the fact that this all happened right before a very um, a very vital time, uh, as is the Fourth of July, when many of our of these groups and including our clients do a lot of voter registration work out in their communities. Um, I think the, the J Chief Judge Mark Walker hit the nail on the head. This is uh, this was an important time for uh, our plaintiffs, for our clients, and it was crucial that the law be blocked before it uh, takes effect. It took effect, and we're very happy that it was. Our guest is Adriel Cepeda de Rue, the deputy director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project. And one of the your colleagues on this lawsuit is the president of Latino Justice, who said that a law that would have made it a crime for non-citizens to assist with voter registration was motivated by animus and had no rational basis. And they go on to say that we will continue to fight against any attempts to suppress or intimidate voters based on their immigration status or their national origin. So motivated by animus, it, it sounds like that your your uh, the, your colleagues and you think that this might be kind of an intentional um, process by the state legislators to just make it more difficult for people uh, who groups that are in, involved in immigration advocacy to register people to vote. Well, you just have to look to the record as the court did. There is very little again that ties um, the ties the, the mere fact that non-citizens are free to engage eligible voters and speak to them about how important voting is and, 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 and encourage them to register. There was nothing that tied that conduct, that speech, that, that, that protected activity that our clients do that tied this to the, the problem that the state was trying or claims that it's trying to solve. So um, that, in fact, the only thing in the record, in the legislative record, was um, stray references to uh, illegals or illegals not being able to do something or other. Again, this law does not make that distinction. It does not say anything about lawful or unlawful status. It treats all non-citizens the same, whether they have uh, unlawful status or whether they have been uh, members of their communities for decades, as many of our clients uh, are and, and have been. So, uh, yes, it, it's very difficult to look at this bill, look at the legislative record and be left with anything other than what uh, the president of, of Latino Justice here said. Last week, I had an attorney on, uh, sorry, a, a law professor on, and uh, to, and one of the things that we did talk about was this bill and the judge's decision. So here is uh, what um, Chara Torres Spellacy, who is a Stetson law professor, had to say about this bill, and this is, again, after the, the judge ruled, which blocked part of this bill. Here's some of what she had to say. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. Here is Chara Torres Spellacy speaking last week. The other frustrating thing about this is Florida has done this before. So Florida has made it nearly impossible for voter registration groups to register voters in Florida. Uh, and it's inevitably challenged and Florida has either lost or settled those cases. So they basically stopped the law that, um, you know, made it so hard for voter registration groups like the League of Women Voters, which is why if you um, are a law nerd, if you look up the League of Women Voters of Florida, you will find that they have been plaintiffs in lots of lawsuits against Florida and that they've won lots of lawsuits against Florida because Florida has this bad habit of trying to make it more difficult to lawfully register to vote. And one of the ways they do that is they just make it completely impossible for the voting rights groups like the League of Women Voters uh, to help people get registered, which is sort of like another version of trying to make it more difficult to vote. So it's not just immigrants that that, that uh, the Florida legislature has kind of put up a boundary for. There are lots of examples that, that our law professor from last week was talking about that where the state legislature and then the governor signs a, a law that makes it harder to register people to vote and to vote. vote. 
Uh, absolutely. She's, she's uh, completely right. I, I do think, and I would agree, I would agree with the professor, and I would say that it's, it's, particular, it's a shame in particular, because as I said, Florida ranks, um, uh, ranks quite low uh, as, uh, for eligible voters uh, who are registered. It's, it's 47th in the nation. Um, this bill and this law uh, seemed particularly uh, draconian and, and particularly worth taking the court because it, it, it's so uh, narrowly targeted uh, communities, uh, marginalized communities that our clients serve, like the ones, uh, again, like where our plaintiffs work. Uh, it's, it's vital for uh, Spanish speakers to do this work uh, to engage eligible voters. For example, many folks from Puerto Rico, where I'm originally from, uh, settled in Florida after Hurricane Maria, and uh, they are eligible voters. They are U.S. citizens. They can be registered to vote. But so, so it's vital to have people who uh, Spanish speakers engage them and let them know just how important it is for them to be registered and for them to vote for their community's sake and for their community's welfare. So uh, that's why this law in particular was was uh, just really couldn't stand and why our clients and why uh, many groups uh, went after this bill. And the bill you're talking about is SB 750, which a judge recently blocked part of that makes it more difficult for community-based organizations to register people to vote. But going back a year or two, in, in 2021, the Florida legislature passed an elections bill. And last year, this same judge blocked part of that uh, what do you can you tell us about that law, what that law would have done and uh, what happened to that law after this judge uh, originally uh, blocked it? Yeah, so I believe that. So I, I believe you're talking about SB 90. That's another bill. Uh, again, it also had several provisions that targeted um, third party voter registration organizations. Some of it has been, uh, again, as you said, Chief Judge Walker did rule that parts of it were not lawful. And I believe it's still working its way through the courts. It's gone up to the uh, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals at least once, I believe, and, and has come back down. But that's still in litigation. I just want to remind people that our guest is Adriel Isapeda Dariu, a deputy director of ACLU's Voting Rights Project. We're talking about that new Florida law that makes it more difficult for community-based organizations to register to vote. The bill is called SB 750. Part of it was blocked by a federal judge re recently. You're, you're listening to Tuesday Cafe, and I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live on August 1st from the studios of WMNF Tampa. If you'd like to weigh in, you can email us at dj at wmnf.org. You can also text at 813-433-0885. Maybe some people have joined us late. Um, Adriel, maybe you can tell us, just remind them, what does SB 750 do and why do, does your group oppose it? Sure. So SB 7050 does a lot of things, but in particularly the ACLU uh, with, uh, with uh, allied groups like Latino Justice uh, and Demos uh, a challenge a part of the bill that requires all um, organizations who engage in third party voter registration work to essentially to not use, employ or work with volunteers who are non-citizens, volunteers or employees who are non-citizens. These groups would have had to file an affirmation saying that they don't do, uh, that they do not employ non-citizens. And for every non-citizen that may be found later to be working with these groups, they would have to pay a $50,000 fine. Now, that is potentially fatal to many groups. Um, in the case of Hispanic Federation, one of our, our clients, for example, $50,000 is about 10% of its entire budget for Florida in a year. Uh, so you can do the math if you're, if they find, if it's three people who by chance or, or you know, by accident uh, register voters and were found to be non-citizens, that's already $150,000 and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the bill banned all non-citizens. It treated all non-citizens the same, whether they have lawful status like our clients do, or whether they have, or whether they have uh, uh, something short of lawful status. And that includes, you know, veterans, that includes people who work in Florida state agencies is that, who have access to sensitive information already. Uh, and the state, it, by virtue of the fact that it is um, banning protected speech, protected conduct, and by virtue of the fact that it's targeting uh, uh, non-citizens in particularly, in particular, had to uh, do what's called tailor its law 
to address a specific problem. And here it did not do that. It just blanket banned all non-citizens from engaging in voter registration work. And it, on July 3rd, uh, Chief Judge Mark Walker of the uh, federal court in Tallahassee said that the state couldn't do that and blocked the law. And we're very happy that he did. So a supporter of this law might make the argument that, OK, well, this law, all it does is it bans people who are non-citizens from doing this volunteer work or this this paid work. Why doesn't why don't these groups just hire citizens that can do it? What would be the, the problem with that argument? The, well, the problem with that argument, again, is that on its face, you are setting up a class of you, you are you're you're discriminating on, on its face. You're saying uh, non-citizens may do something and uh, uh, citizens. Uh, non-citizens can't do this activity and citizens can. And uh, there, are, there are ways that, that, that you can do that uh, that, are, that are lawful, but this is not one of them. Uh, again, the fact that the, the, the bill treats all non-citizens the same, uh, again, whether they have lawful or unlawful status, whether they're legally protected uh, residents, uh, le legal permanent residents, excuse me, uh, in which case, Congress has, by virtue of the fact that they have lawful status, said that they can be here, said that they can be part of their communities. Uh, the state just can't um, uh, say that they are carved out from their communities and excise these people from engaging in protected activity. Um, uh, the other a part of it, as I said, is that by banning um, people from engaging in voter registration work, it's a First Amendment violation. They are banning protected speech and protected conduct. This is not just any kind of flyer that you're handing out in the street or, or any kind of, uh, uh, of speech that, that is being banned here. This is what's called in the case law core political speech, uh, telling people that voting is important, telling people that they should be part of their democracy. That is firmly protected under the First Amendment. And uh, it, it's just not something the state gets to do without violating the U.S. Constitution, as uh, the court recognized. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on Tuesday Cafe today, Adriel. Thank you so much, Sean. Great to be here. Pleasure to, pleasure to speak to you today. Thanks very much. Adriel I. Cepeda de Rieu is Deputy Director of the ACLU's Voting Rights Project. And if you missed this interview, you can watch it beginning this afternoon. It'll be on our website, WMNF.org. Tuesday Cafe also airs on the television station TBAE on Tuesdays at 8 in the morning and at 2 in the afternoon. I want to thank our phone screener, Greg. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan, News and Public Affairs Director here at WMNF Tampa. During this time slot tomorrow, you can hear Shelly Reback host Midpoint at 10. Next up is Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberger. You can hear their interview with Tim Burke. This has been Tuesday Cafe coming to you live on August 1st, 2023 from the studios of WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. You can support great programming like this by donating at WMNF.org. Thanks so much to everyone for supporting Community Radio.